Hey there, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to episode number eight. Wow, we're already at number eight. Episode number eight of Real Estate Agent Rehab. Uh, we have a special episode today talking specifically about the coronavirus yes. and all the best practices that we can do as real estate agents, how it's affecting our business, how mm -hmm. it's affecting our contracts, our clients, the market, all sorts of stuff. And uh, sorry for the late introduction, but I'm Amir al -Kayat, the broker and owner of West Shores Realty. And, and Vance Mizzy, uh, Vice President of Agency Development here at West Shores Realty. And uh, I'll tell you what, eight weeks ago, we did not think we would be doing an episode like this. Not at all. And we were like thinking that it was just going to be all about best practices and different yeah, techniques yeah. and all sorts of fun stuff about, you know, the market, what's going yeah, on, good things really are going fun on stories and things like that. But you know what? And as we're saying this, I'm sure you're thinking the same thing. Eight weeks ago, you were not thinking I'm going to be locked in my house with my kids or locked inside and not able to go out or, you know, watching things close down and things to that effect. So we're going to go through some ideas on just what's happening in the real estate industry as, mm -hmm. as a whole uh, this, it, this is from national association of realtors so it's not right. like car so yeah so the first thing we'll talk about is uh this newsletter or, that was put out by the national association of realtors talking about the coronavirus and how it affects our market what we should be doing as realtors as brokers and things of that nature and you know since we're kind of we're in a professional industry where we have to continue facilitating these sorts of transactions no matter essentially what's going on essentially like a almost like a doctor or an attorney or whatever yeah, we, we are in the field you know yeah. i mean in sales one of the one of the main things that we talk about is you know if you're in sales you're pressing palms right which you're going out there you know belly to belly face to face and all of a sudden they're telling us you know we got to do that but we can we can do that but we have to stay in stay six feet away from each other and things which we're not effect. actually compliant right now no we're not but shane <laughs> told us we were far enough so we're going with, we're going with what shane said so let's let's kind of get this stuff rolling so we can start talking about it yeah absolutely <laughs> are you don't okay? worry i'm not sick <laughs> okay good um so we'll talk a little bit about what what the coronavirus is so i'm sure a lot of you already know but we're going to touch over this really quickly uh because it kind of leads into some more things yeah. but um, and this is, these are stats from March 11th. So obviously since then, um, right now we're March, what, 18th, 18th right now. Yeah. So, um, obviously this virus has affected more than 150,000 individuals in over 134 countries. And it's been, this outbreak kind of started as a, I really call it like a pandemic. It started on March 11th. So mm -hmm. systems include fever, cough, shortness of breath, which are all pretty broad and from what i'm hearing too like you don't even have to have symptoms you could have it we just don't right you get everybody can be carrying it you know and, and really you know I'm, I'm not downplaying this in any level but it's 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 very much like the flu in the fact that if you have it you can uh you can transpose you know you can give it to other people okay so just keep that in mind like if you're sick stay home it's you know we're going to talk about that in in best practices on how to prevent but it's just what is car coronavirus it's and from what i understand you know the, there are other coronaviruses which is funny really? I mean, not funny uh coronavirus is just a uh that's why they call it the covid 19. okay it's the coronavirus 19. So it was uh, something like they were talking about H1N1 the other mm. night, and that was a coronavirus. Mm. So the COVID-19 is a specific strain of, of a coronavirus. Mm. So it's just things to be aware of like that when, when we're talking in these broad terms. And uh, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning. He says, my wife thinks she has it. I'm like, why? Oh he goes, I don't know. She's been home for two weeks washing her hands. He goes, the, the skin is melting off her, her hands, and she came in the, the house. Look, there's so much going on on TV right now. We're reading so much about this stuff. We're hearing about all these different things. Um, we have to be very careful to understand what it is and not be so reactionary or overreactionary in this uh, crazy feel like all of a sudden, oh my God, I, I sneezed, I must have coronavirus. Right, I'm sure there's a lot of that going on. I'm Everyone's sure. very hypersensitive to it. Obviously, we've seen it. We've had 
agents, employees, and people have called out sick and things of that nature. So it's, uh, it can affect everybody. And we just mm-hmm. don't know. And there's not enough testing out there, which sucks. Because right. they don't have, you can't just go to Rite Aid and go buy a testing kit and say, right. okay, do I have it or not? From what I understand um, from hearing this morning, it sounded like the testing was pretty invasive. Like as far I thought it was as, like a flu test. Like they just shove a yeah, Q-tip down your nostril or something. Yeah, it's either nostril or throat. It's, it sounds very much like a strep throat kind of thing where nobody likes to be tested for strep. Yeah, so it's not it's a, a fun a, test, right. but it's only it lasts a couple seconds. Yeah. But, um, and then it's like a 48-hour turnaround time. They said 24 to 48 hours to find out. So... So, all right. So what kind of measures can be taken to reduce it? Like this is the one way just to like not spread it. Yeah. So what can we do? Um, wash your hands. Oh, my God. What a, what a novel <laughs> thought. Wash your hands. You know, and uh, use soap and water. Uh, there, there's, there's an old trick for it says, you know, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. There's an old trick that uh, doctors use when, when they wash their hands, and that's they sing happy birthday. And oh, really? Yeah, the happy birthday song is about 20, <laughs> 25 seconds long. And if you sing that while you wash your hands, you've actually washed your hands thoroughly. Okay? It's very much like brushing your teeth. There's another song for that. So it's just we're, we're talking about this. But uh, wash your hands thoroughly. Okay? Uh, if soap and water aren't available, then use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. But the number one thing they're saying is wash your hands with soap and mm-hmm. water. Don't continually wipe. Uh, alcohol, alcohol-based hand sin- sanitizer over your hands all day, every day. You will experience tremendously dried-out skin. It'll really irritate you. It'll hurt, and uh, you're going to open yourself up to other infections. Okay, right. so wash your hands. Uh, Dove soap seems to be a big one that everybody's using, and ivory soap. So it's two things that you could uh, think about. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Okay, so if you wash your hands, you can touch your face all you want. No, but and and something I'm I'm experiencing, and this I, I kind of appreciate this is this this social distancing where you're not shaking everybody's hands and not saying, "Hey, I'm not worried about it." Anymore. Put it here, okay? Have respect for one another, for social uh, bounds, and even for moving outside of that realm mm-hmm. when you're just. You love this right now because you're not I a handshaker. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a <laughs> So I'm now not you a have a real excuse. I'm not a hugger. I'm like, <laughs> COVID, okay? But a voice, avoid close contact with anyone who is sick. Again, remember what I said about the flu. This is kind of the same precautions that we take when someone's sick. If you have the flu, don't stand next to me. Don't sneeze on me, all right? Don't share my food. It's all that same kind of uh, cross-contamination. And uh, something that I find interesting is when people are sick we we just had a a vicious flu run through california Mm -hmm. right all over the united states last month and everybody was walking into work like oh i'm sick i don't feel good it was like well then go home oh now you're just being mean to me no you're sick go home get better come back okay there's not a there's nothing mean about that so when you're thinking about this stuff take into account that and then uh, stay home if you have a fever or a cough or your you know shortness of breath, flu-like symptoms. Okay, whether you have COVID nineteen or not, nobody wants the flu. All right, thank God we're moving out of flu season. Sort okay. of. I mean, it's still like kind of like rainy and cold here. And yeah, in you know, LA. people are still getting sick. They're still getting colds. Nobody wants that. Whether or not it's COVID nineteen or the you know common house cold. Something that I'm seeing, I'm, I'm expecting moving forward, is this is really going to change the way people respond socially, you know, moving into the future. Right. I think like a lot of the shift is going to be more towards virtual yeah. office space and virtual meetings. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to get acclimated with using one of the, uh, is it called Zoom? Yep. Zoom meetings, Zoom. some of those other programs out there. Obviously, we're broadcasting and doing a video. We're also on Facebook mm-hmm. Live right now. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're using all the tools yeah. to not be in front of people. You know, it's um, a, it says clean, disinfect, touched objects and surfaces. I've been having our office manager for six months, for eight months since I took over wiping surfaces down and and you know we have we keep clorox wipes on hand you know people were making fun of me a week ago about being a germaphobe now they're all like where are those clorox wipes you know and so it's it's these things that moving forward we're gonna we're gonna see a lot more expectation of that which Mm -hmm. is okay Mm -hmm. it's okay to be cleaner okay you know uh, there was a film the other day on an airline was disinfecting their airplane 
and they put this film out like, look, we're disinfecting our airplanes now. And the guy who was presenting it said, well, what did they do a week ago? Right. Like, weren't they doing that a week ago? And the answer is, well, no. Okay. And then uh, cover your mouth and nose with a tissue while you cough. Now, I can appreciate the whole sneeze into your sleeve thing and cough into your sleeve, but carry some tissues and make sure that you're not sneezing on your on your sleeve like what most people try to do and say, oh, no, it's okay. It's just a cold. Uh, additionally, help prevent uh, virus is uh, next eight weeks. Stay out of public events. You know, we had a number of uh, events that you and I had going on that we we were hosting that we had yeah. to cancel. We had to shut down our, our big sales meeting. We had a big lunch and learn event. I mean, I had tickets to the Grand Prix. Those are done. Yeah. I had Michael Buble tickets. Those are done too. Mm -hmm. So everything's pretty much done. All the big events, yeah. concerts. I, I um, had concert gyms tickets. Closed, Michael Buble. Restaurants are closed. <laughs> yeah. Like anywhere where, where a bunch of people can congregate is pretty much done. Right? It's, it's kind of weird. I have to go grocery shopping. My wife and I eat every meal that we eat out. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden our refrigerator has food in it. You know, it's like, well, now we got to start cooking, you know, and, uh, you know, we eat healthy, but in the same right, it's we, you know, it's just the two of us. So we never planned ahead. Now we got to start planning ahead with these things. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you this. So what, what issues are we really being faced with today in real estate that the coronavirus is bringing forth? Well, I think the one of the main issues that I'm seeing is that initially we have some escrows that are are falling apart. You know, there's a few that are that are falling out because of obviously somebody getting cold feet because mm -hmm. they may work in an industry to where they are directly affected by the the virus. Okay, right. Well, For but, example, let me put that in perspective. Okay, how many escrows do we have active right now? Right now we have 95 escrows. 95. How many fell out this week with the initial, oh my God, the sky is falling coronavirus? Probably about four. Four. Okay. So it's, it's almost 4%. It, yeah. I would say it's about 4%. Okay. Because there's still some, some good things about the market. Obviously the, the rates are an all time low. Mm -hmm. You can get in and negotiate a pretty good deal right now, even though it kind of it was a seller's market and now it's kind of shifting into mm -hmm. this like you know sporadic buyer's market in a sense. So there's still some good to these deals, but you know once we're getting them under contract, we're, we're seeing other issues. Now, when clients are working for major co companies that may have sent everybody home, mm -hmm. you know we're having issues with verification of employment on loans right or getting a hold of people at banks where they've sent everybody home and they're working with skeleton crews so things are backed up and mm -hmm. escrows are getting delayed um you know even the county recorder's office is kind of shut down everything's e-filing now mm -hmm. so there are these additional stumbling blocks um that are happening right now mm -hmm. obviously some more stumbling blocks that we're going to talk about when it comes to kind of some of our business practices mm -hmm. when we're marketing a property but uh, i think companies or families that um are directly affected by the virus what i mean by that is their work what kind of work they do and maybe losing their job or maybe being sent home mm -hmm. those are the ones that are getting cold feet and backing out sure but still the majority are still good yeah right I mean, a majority yes and you know uh to touch on the county recorders uh thing being closed that affected like less than one percent of closings because all, all it really affected were special closings. Correct. You can't and do a special record, recording, a special which record. obviously, if you're in California, you know what that means. Maybe in a different state, you may not know what that means. But you and, and, and that is can minimal. walk in the title. I mean, and in get in my 12 years, I've done three yeah. special recordings. Yeah, I mean, you're just you going to record the next day. It's not right. really a big deal. But it's I mean, just, you know, a, a special recording, just so you know, is when you fund that day and the, the buyer of the property goes to the counter recorder goes in and records their deed that day as opposed to funding on a thursday and recording on a friday mm -hmm. very exactly. simple it's it's not a big deal it's not like they you know the first thing when i was first told somebody walked to my office and said the, the county recorder's office just closed i was like oh my god 
Okay. <laughs> that's a problem. Well, they didn't okay? give you all the information. Yeah, you know, and that's where it's like, you know, a lot of information is coming out in dribs and drabs and pieces. And just make sure you're you're really finding out exactly what's going on. Get the on. whole story. Yeah. You got to get the whole story because, because you, you kind of hear what you want to hear, maybe the most negative portion, and you take that and you run with it, and then it right. becomes like telephone, right? And it becomes this hysteria-driven but, thing. So it's it's not as bad as it sounds. It's just, it's bad. But remember, it's, it, it's more how we react mm -hmm. over the next three to six weeks than what is happening. Yeah. Exactly. You know, staying home and being with your family and staying away from sick people just isn't a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes, you know, we're forced to get out there and do our job. Absolutely. You know, and that's why. Yeah, and that's moving forward. The, you know, the National Association of Realtors put out this, yeah. this bulletin. And how, how do we interact with clients today? Well, that's what we're going to talk about right now. So, um, obviously, um, what's interesting is that this virus has brought up uh, potential fair housing issues for clients meaning that um obviously with a lot the strain of the virus kind of started out was found in china you know you can't discriminate somebody uh, because they're from another country right because they might wow. have the virus i didn't i didn't even think of that i, I thought i couldn't discriminate against them if they had a cough but now well, we're talking to, well now i mean i'm just saying okay, like yeah, yeah, that's yeah, kind right. of like a unique uh yeah. unique situation interesting but they bring this up you know you can't yeah. be like oh i'm not going to help that person because they're from a country where they have mm -hmm. a lot of uh coronavirus right so you got to take that into consideration however we are still allowed to people allowed to ask people hey mm -hmm. have you traveled outside the country within the last few weeks uh number one do you have any are you are you sick at all? Do you have any fever or any cough or any, any symptoms of the coronavirus? Mm -hmm. So those things we can ask. You know, if you've been to a hospital lately, in the last few months, those are the first couple things they're going to ask you. Right. And then, you know, obviously they can take necessary precautions for you once you get to the hospital. And the same thing goes for you. Like you want to protect yourself to make sure you don't get it from somebody else mm -hmm. that may have it. And you should be able to ask those questions. So sure. legally you can ask those questions, which is good. Um, you just have to stay consistent across the board and ask those questions to everybody. So you can't just be like, well, I'm just only going to ask these folks because they're from this certain country. Right, right, right. right. Okay. And yeah, not ask the folks that are that sure. are from here, for example. Mm -hmm. So you got to stay consistent with that. Um, driving a potential client to a listing. Like I know a lot of us still show property and take yeah. our clients around in our car and things of that nature. Um, can you refuse to do that as an agent? Yes, you can. Um, you know, that might be a best practice in this, uh, during this situation. So you just have to stay consistent with that as well. You can't say, well, I'm going to drive these folks cause they're really close to me right. or whatever, if but I'm, I'm not going to drive one, I got to drive all. Okay. Whichever yeah. direction you choose, whether you're going to take a very conservative approach to this and maybe not even interact with clients at all. And, you know, maybe mm -hmm. just go into a two or three weeks, uh, hiatus, or if you're going to go into, if you're going to continue your business, which I would recommend because we're making deals left and right. Just make sure you protect yourself and you stay consistent with how you interact with these clients because yeah. it is a sensitive situation mm -hmm. and you don't know who you're dealing with out there. And you right. might find that one person that's an attorney or knows the law or what have you and is going to create this big fuss for you mm -hmm. and your broker like me. <laughs> and then, then you end up in a situation right. or some litigation. Now, right? uh, going on your thing on taking a hiatus, okay? It's okay to stay home and do marketing all right right now uh, making phone calls sending out letters sending out mailers doing interaction with with people from afar that's a good practice and if you're not going to be out in the field working then i would not be taking this time off Right. You can be you know, working on your prospecting. Yeah. You can still do cold calling. You can still do social media marketing. You can still do your mailers. Right? Or just work on your own branding. Right. You know, your, your, your social media channels and getting these things up and going and getting things looking right so that when you do come back, you come back with a presence. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's plenty to do in this business aside from buying and selling homes. You now, buying and selling homes is the most important thing we do. But there's other things that can be done that need to be done. You know, uh, one of my coaches says you need to spend as much time working on your business as you do in your business. Mm -hmm. And if we have two or three weeks ahead of us that we're not going to be working in our business, it's time to start working on our business. And that, that's a take I'm, I'm using here. You know, I have, I have less agents in my office coming in and, 
asking questions and things like that. So I have a lot more time for myself and I'm doing a lot of work on my personal business, on my marketing. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm using that time efficiently and mm -hmm. that's really what we should all be focusing on. Absolutely. Now, here's a big one that's been coming up lately. I get asked this a lot from agents it's about open houses and brokers open. Yeah. Right. This is one where obviously it your brokerage, depending on who you work for, they mm -hmm. might just say, don't do any open houses. Uh, some of them just might leave it up to you and your seller. Right. Um, at my brokerage, I'm leaving it up to you and your seller. So our best practice for that is to essentially go over the pros and cons of having the open house with your sellers and ensure that's the best decision for them. Yeah. Um, if it is a home own, homeowner occupied property, it may not be the best course of action, but if it is a vacant property, it may not be that big of a deal mm -hmm. to do that. But you must ensure that you have the proper equipment there at the house to sanitize. Um, obviously, paper towels, uh, wipes, um, soap and water, and you know, make sure the utilities are turned on so that you can get yourself clean. Like mm -hmm. whoever comes in and out should wash their hands. You can even ask questions when people come into the open house and say, hey, have you traveled anywhere mm -hmm. in the last two weeks? And also, you know, do you have any symptoms, uh, cold or flu symptoms right now? Like ask those people at the front door. If everybody's clear and they wash their hands, check out the house. Yep. You know, and then they'll they'll understand and they'll respect that. Yeah, I mean, if either way, they have to understand. You know, I mean, look, I'd I'd be happy to answer somebody if they said, "Hey, are, you know, do you have any flu or cold symptoms?" I'd be no, I don't. I'm good to go. You know, or mm -hmm. I and grateful they're asking. Right, as opposed to offended, they're asking me. As right, and and going back to the, to the other thing, as long as they're asking everybody. Right. Okay, and it's you know it's one of those things even at the airports. Right. You know, as you're walking through the airport and they're doing the metal detector thing and they're taking, you know, knives and stuff from people. If as long as they're taking them all from everybody, I have no problem with that. Right. And it's the same thing here. As long as you're asking people these questions on a consistent basis, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, something else I just wanted to touch real quick in prospecting is door knocking. All right, a lot of agents do door knocking. And uh, the thing today is, you know, we you might feel comfortable walking up to 100 doors and knocking on them, but the people who have you on the other end of the door, they may not be too happy with you knocking on their door. Yeah, okay. definitely not a good time to do that. So what I'm instructing my agents to do is do door drops right That's nothing cool. wrong with going up and handing a door you know putting something on somebody's doorstep if they answer the door say hey you know what just wanted to leave this here for you uh one set of agents of mine is actually actually put together a a bag and in the bag is a hand sanitizer man they found some and yeah yeah that's awesome information about coronavirus and information about the market today so it's that kind of thing that you know you're handing things out that that are kind of interesting. They're handy. They're topical. You know, right now, today, you know, t who would who would have ever thought hand sanitizer was the going to be thing the, now. the thing? You know, but it is. Now you want it. You want a trick? What's that? Baby wipes. But they don't have all the antibacterial in them. They're not bad. It's a lot better than saying they didn't have hand sanitizer. I'm not saying hand them out, but if you're in the store, you can't find hand sanitizer. You want something to keep in your car or something like that. Handy wipes, baby wipes. You can have something with you. At least you've got something to clean your hands with. But again, nothing's going to work better than soap and water. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. And uh, what, what precautions should brokers be considering taking in their own offices? And... My first and foremost is if you're sick or you don't feel well, please don't come in. Okay, please don't come in. Don't suck it up. Don't, I'm going to do this one for the team kind of thing. Take one for the team, stay home. Because there's plenty that you can do at home. Uh, we are disinfecting twice a day, once in the morning and once in, once in the afternoon. We're saying, hey, you know, wiping down the whole office with Clorox wipes and uh, spraying, you know, uh, Lysol throughout because Lysol kills this thing as well, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah. So it's it's these things that you're just moving towards. And as an agent, when you're coming in and the place smells clean and it's been wiped down, 
it gives you a sense of safety, right? And uh, moving back to the open houses, maybe if you're doing somebody's open house at the end of the day, you want to wipe the place down. Well, yeah, you definitely want to disinfect after. You know, yeah, and if if you don't feel that's in your <laughs> in your job description, then don't do it. And I don't mean don't wipe it down. I mean don't do the open house. Yeah, I think at you a know, minimum you should be wiping everything down yeah. and you need for the client, have, you know, and for future v- visitors yeah. and for showings. For, that's for sure. You know, doorknobs, touched surfaces all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's something that we should be doing, mm-hmm. with or without this thing, floating around. Okay, you know, just in common practice, and and you know, if if we continue these practices moving forward, we're going to see flus drop. We're going to see common colds drop because people aren't going to be handing them over to everybody just because they're in the same room with them. Yeah, there's definitely going to be know? a different different level of self-awareness mm-hmm. when it comes to trying getting people sick and making yeah. sure you're staying home when you're sick and all that stuff. And, you know, even at the offices, we had to cancel our sales meetings and a lot of big events. Yep. We've canceled our classes here for the next two weeks. Mm-hmm. So we're going to wait to see what happens. And, and, you know, just kind of letting agents know, don't come in unless you really have to, yeah. you know, and that's kind of the deal. Um, you know, cause I, I know a lot of people like to come into the office to quote unquote work or hang out, but it's, you know, we're coming in, we're doing real estate. You're around the office, you're doing your thing. It's okay to be here. Just don't be here if you're sick yeah. and don't walk into your office sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, real quick. We want to end on this note with, which is, uh, that was all NAR stuff, National Association of Realtors. The CAR, California Association of Realtors just released a new form. Yes, the coronavirus addendum or uh, amendment, and it's called the CVA form. So it's a new form just came out yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, It's an addendum to add to the residential purchase agreement. So if you're not in California, this doesn't apply to you. Your state might be doing something else. Um, But what it's doing is it's kind of adding in the force majeure clause into the agreement. And for those of you what that... What is the force majeure clause? The force America? majeure clause is a clause uh, uh, in an in a agreement of some sorts where somebody could back out due to unforeseen circumstances, meaning a death, uh, an earthquake, right. fire, something major that happens in your life. You lose Act, your job. Acts of God. Things that Acts that of God. That's what it is. Now, what, what this amendment has done was it's... In, the, the force majeure clause is in all contracts. It's embedded in all that. Uh, yep. What this amendment does is adds the coronavirus into the force majeure, um, I guess, uh, definition. Yes, because it's right. not clear right. that the, the COVID-19 could be part of the force majeure clause. But this specifies that it is and then it, that it will be, and there could be delays in your escrow or another reason why somebody could back out of a contract. Right. Um, and this goes back to what I was saying in the beginning of the, of the podcast was the fact that we have, we're having escrows where there are delays. We're having vo- mm-hmm. uh, verification of employment issues. We're having issues with uh, funding at lenders. We're having issues uh, at the county recorder mm-hmm. and different things of that nature. So the standard purchase agreement in the state of California doesn't allow for this you can't just say because there's the coronavirus we can just extend our times Mm -hmm. if you don't close on a certain time you serve a notice to perform and you try to cancel the contract well this kind of gives people that extra condition or that extra contingency in a sense this isn't this isn't opening it up to you know undefined terms what it's saying is if we have a circumstance outside of normal operating situation we have an opportunity that we can uh, invoke this and nobody's losing their money mm-hmm. and nobody's going to be in a, a position mm-hmm. of of uh, being taken advantage of. Exactly. Um, and this is an addendum that we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be using on new transactions. So anything moving forward, we're going to be starting to use this and then it could be incorporated in anything previous if necessary yeah i guess um, i guess a message would be talk to your broker see how they want to yeah i mean i mean for us that's what we're doing but you would definitely have to yeah. talk to your broker on that and see what they're doing but it's there so if you're a california realtor you can look it up in your zip forms and there's four different selections on here that you can you can choose from 
depending on postponing the close of escrow by 30 days or a certain amount of days that you've chosen. Um, the second option, buyer and seller agree, notwithstanding that the buyer may have removed their loan contingency. Um, if, if buyer's inability to fund the loan and close escrow is due to buyer's loss of income from COVID related issue, then either party may cancel the agreement. So if for some reason your company shuts down because of the coronavirus, and you can't you don't make any money anymore you can back out of the deal or the seller can back out of the mm -hmm. deal too so it kind of protects both parties in that sense um or you can choose option three which is essentially buyer and seller mutually cancel the agreement due to uh, uh the coronavirus and then you could actually implement a, a fourth item if you wanted to on this form so you know it's real man it's, it's out there <laughs> it's out there and uh you know my advice or our advice to everybody is stay safe Stay so, safe, stay, stay healthy, healthy, do your job, yeah. right? Stay healthy, uh, get plenty of vitamin C, do your job, uh, be socially respectful of people. Right. Practice social distancing. Yeah. You know, stay to yourself, and, it's okay. And, it, it, you know, again, I mean, that, that social respect is, is really something that I, I think we're going to benefit from long term with, with this whole thing where there's a lot of understanding of going on with, with, uh, people's private and personal space but uh just be safe out there you know if, if you have any questions go to your broker ask them their position on how we're how they want the office their office to respond to different things and uh don't just take it on your own and make up your own decisions you've got a broker that you work with go by their rule let them let them tell you what and how to to move forward through different deals exactly so with that said that's going to be the end of episode eight so yeah, we, guys, we will see you next week we will definitely see you next week um and hopefully we'll have uh some good topics yeah. if you have any ideas of topics that you want us to talk about please leave it in the comments below and we'll definitely try to hit on that subject but we'll do some market updates next week we'll we can talk, talk about, about the market because yeah. and how things have gotten affected yeah, the stock market's a little crazy we got interest rates going down to zero which is which is the fed funds rate we'll talk a lot about that next week and we'll just we'll discuss how all these uh these different topics fall into uh creating a, a better real estate environment for all of us. Sounds like a plan. With that said, thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next week. See you then. Thanks, folks.